Hi, I'm Mike Frankovich. Um, I started a Facebook group last year. It's called Californians for Classic Car Smog Exemptions. Uh, currently, I think we have a couple hundred members on there. Um, it's been alerted to me that uh, they actually came out with a new assembly bill. It's called Assembly Bill 210. Uh, they're trying to exempt all the classic cars going up to the 1982 model year. Currently, the law, uh, the exemption only goes up to 1975 model year cars. Uh, currently, I only own one car that would be exempted by this bill that isn't already exempted, uh, which is the one right beside me here. It's a, a 1977 uh, AMC Pacer. Uh, I got this car almost two years ago. I've put less than 2,000 miles in that time. It's all been for like car shows and things like that, cruise nights and whatnot. Um, that's what these cars are basically used for. I mean, I think that's really what this bill represents is that these cars are not being used as daily drivers. These are these are cars that are all carbureted. Um, a lot of the emissions parts are no longer available. Uh, and it, generally, a lot of them won't, won't pass a visual inspection uh, for the emissions, unfortunately, which is why they fail. Uh, even if they'll pass the uh, actual tailpipe test. Um, so this bill recognizes these are historic vehicles that they're being basically maintained as as educational pieces, as cars that go to uh, different car shows. And a lot of these car shows are being used as... Um, all these car shows are basically, uh, you know, charity events. A lot of them, you know, benefit a lot of different charities, you know, Red Cross, veterans charities, things like that. Um, and I think that's what this bill recognizes. Uh, so kind of like a history. I, I, back in high school, I was in high school in the early 90s. Uh, I think the smog cutoff year back then was 66 and newer had to be smogged. And I think they went to like a 20-year exemption. Uh, which was the rule for a while. Then later on, at some point, it switched to a 30-year rolling exemption uh, up until 19, I thought 2005, I believe, is when they changed it to, they stopped it at 1975. So everything 75 and older was exempt, uh, whereas you know everything 76 and newer uh, has to be smogged, which is kind of where it's been since then. Um, so there's been a few bills uh, trying to get it uh, bumped up to you know later years. A couple of years ago, there was one called Senate Bill 1239, uh, which actually kind of got killed because it didn't get voted on. Uh, that would have bumped it up to 1980, but it would have been contingent on the cars being insured as collector vehicles, which a lot of them are, including my Pacer here is insured as a collector car. Um, so I talked to somebody from the Association of uh, California Car Clubs. Uh, he told me to check out the bill because uh, it was actually, you know, read there was like some support for the bill and opposition for the bill. So the support, I'm actually going to read it, was Association of Car Clubs, um, which actually they sponsored that bill. They, they started it. Peterson Automobile Museum, Pontiacs of Bakersfield, Rods and Relics of Lincoln Hills, Specialty Equipment, Market Association, which is SEMA, as well as 900 plus individuals actually uh, uh, emailed their support to the California Assembly for the bill. Uh, the opposition, it's this is uh, American Lung Association, Bay Area, Bay Area Quality Management District, or Air Quality Management District, California Air Pollution Control Officers Association, the Coalition for Clean Air, National Resources Defense Council, as well as the Sierra Club of California. So those are didn't say any individuals actually opposed it just just those groups because you know i mean you know those are pretty heavy hitters those guys are some heavy lo environmental lobbying lobbying groups uh i'm sure with lots of people in sacramento but i think you get enough people together to say hey you know these cars represent a small you know portion of the actual vehicles in the state and they're generally used as educational as, as show vehicles um so this is really why i think they should move it up i made a list here um obviously these are collector vehicles they're most of them aren't used for everyday transportation uh original smog parts actually aren't available for every old car now back then uh as many of you might know they made two different cars. They made a California car and they made a 49 state car where it came to emissions. Now, the California cars a lot of times had special parts only used on California cars. Obviously, all these parts are obsolete. They haven't been made in years. And if you try to upgrade a different part or a carburetor or something like that, it fails the visual inspection and then you're, you're kind of host. Um, 
So since a lot of the stuff isn't available, I mean, a lot of the reper- you know, a lot of the stuff that you can get is would work just as well to keep the emissions down, but it's not legal. So this kind of allows you to do that sort of thing. Um, also, many smog stations nowadays don't actually have the pre-OBD2, so 1995 and older equipment uh, to do those cars. A lot of them don't want to do it because the OBD2, which is the 96 and newer cars, uh, are much easier to smog. I mean, they just plug it into the port under the dash. It tells it in like a couple minutes whether it passed or not. I mean, they can knock out three or four of those in the time it takes them to do a pre-OBD2 car. And they make way more money doing the, the OBD2 cars, you know. And you're getting to the point where 1995 is 24 years ago currently. They're old cars. I mean, I've actually been told by smog places they don't want to do them anymore. There's, I mean, they're paying for this equipment that realistically, you know, they see maybe two or three of these cars a week, you know. Whereas, you know, their bread and butter is doing the new stuff. Um they also charge more for the older cars. You know, the new cars, usually it's about 40 bucks to get a smog on an OBD2 car. On the pre-OBD2 stuff, I've seen anywhere from $75 to $100 to smog it. You get into the pre-OBD2 stuff, you know, a lot of these guys don't want, just don't want to touch these cars. They, they just hate it, and they, they say a lot of them will fail, and then the people complain, and it just it looks bad on them. They leave them bad Yelp reviews, and it's just they just don't want to touch it. There's one guy here locally that I, I, I've gone to you know, for a few smogs. He won't touch anything that is uh, carbureted, he, but he does do the fuel-injected cars that go on the rollers um, because he says the carbureted stuff's hard to get past, and then people complain to him. Um also, if they move the year up, I think what you're going to see more than anything, a lot of guys are going to buy these cars, especially your F-bodies uh, and your, your Mustangs, your, your Fox body Mustangs of those years, to install modern engines. So they're actually going to do Coyote swaps, LS swaps, Hellcat swaps, stuff like that, um, which anytime you put a modern engine in an old car, it's obviously it's going to get a lot better emissions now. It's currently legal to do that. You can you can actually stick those modern engines in, but it's a pain in the ass because you still have to go through the smog referee to make it legal, and that's dealing with more government agencies, and it becomes a huge pain. I, I could honestly see, if this goes through, more of modern power plants being put into the vintage cars, uh, which is actually better for the environment when you think about it. Um, also, most of these cars, a lot of them have left the state or have been crushed. I mean, for years, no one, a lot of people just didn't want to deal with it. It's like, why would I buy a 76 when I could find the same car as a 75 or a 74 where I don't have to deal with it? You know, it's just one thing you don't have to deal with it. And you feel better about investing money in something that you know you're not going to have to deal with the smog. Um, what I'd like to see... <laughs> Realistically, I'd like to see them go to pre OBD2 as exempt. I mean, they're they're in, they're all cloud, they're all old cars now. Um, in the coming years, I mean, there's less and less of them every year anyway. I mean, you're going to alleviate the problems with the smog stations not wanting to do them anyway. Uh, if you just stick to all the OBD2 stuff and later, um, so what you can do. Um, I'm going to talk to the Association of California Car Clubs. If you're in a car club, if you have a you're in a Facebook group for you know, car enthusiasts, if you go to a cruise night and it's like sort of like a group, if you can get together and say, put together, there's a way you could put together a letter of, a, you know, something where you, you want this approved to the California Assembly and they'll list you on the groups in support of the bill uh, when they read it off in the Assembly. So it's a way to do that. You can also, you know, as a person, you can email your local Assembly person or the California Assembly in support of this. Unfortunately, you're just going to get listed as a number of how many people email them in support. But at any time, that, if that number's huge, obviously that, that plays a huge part in it but really getting clubs to do it um i think you need contact i'm gonna try to put a link to uh, the group i started which is californians for classic car uh exemptions as well as to the association of california car clubs uh in the description and if you get a hold of those guys if you join the facebook group um you'll you'll pretty much we're, we're going to try to keep everybody updated on what's going on with the bill and hopefully we can get it approved uh, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to watch, I do car videos. So if you want to do see more of my car videos, you can check them out and you can uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, and I'm Mike Frankovich.